The last hours have become more and more mysterious. It's Monday the 29th of January. South Hall, west of London, has a thriving Asian community. For most of the last 25 years, Surinder Gill has lived here. Right, none of us like maths, but you still have to do it. He began yeah. the day as usual, and ferrying his daughter about. and his brother's two children to school. I suggest to you that you uh, pull your socks up. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Right. Surinder had done right. well since he himself we left school. He'd clearly prospered. Come on. He up, drove yeah. an expensive, customised Mercedes. Mr. Gill had acquired a distinctive number plate reflecting both his name and his personality. He was yeah. flamboyant, image no, conscious, and drew attention to himself. No his all. car was virtually his office, <laughs> and much of his yeah, business yeah. was conducted on his mobile phone. Yeah, if that's the policy you want, then that's the way I'll arrange it. Not at all. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Bye. He was regarded as a charmer and was well known in the neighborhood. <laughs> At lunchtime, Sarinda had bought some sandwiches and chips, but he never got to finish them. A few moments later, he was noticed by Bobby Chana, who works at this chemist shop in South Road. A few seconds after this, something extraordinary happened to Sarinda Gill. It must have taken place somewhere down this high street. Were you in South Road, South Hall, at two o'clock on Monday the 29th of January? Did you see an unusual incident involving a maroon Mercedes? At one minute past two, a business associate rang Surinder in his car. Hello, Mr Gill. Hi, it's Mr Hill. I've got uh, the, the file in connection with your property. Can I come and see you now? No, you can't actually come and see us today. You can come and see us tomorrow. The counter's not in today. Disconnect. Disconnect. Mr Gill. Mr. Mr. Gill? Whatever happened in or near South Road, within moments, Surinder's car was seen half a mile away in Merrick Road. It's now a mile and a half away at ten past two on Greenford Road. That's strange. The guy in the car over there is wearing a crush helmet. Half a mile further up Greenford Road, the car was seen to turn around and head back towards South Hall. Beaver's open space in Hounslow, a witness saw a big red car drive across the playing field beside Green Lane. It's possible the car remained here for half an hour or more. Do you remember seeing it? And what was going on? Sarinda failed to collect his daughter from her school. Whatever happened to Mr. Gill that afternoon, one witness says he reappeared that evening at Gillette Corner. At 6.45, as though nothing in the world was wrong, he turned up at the Comet Warehouse in Cyan Lane. I'm having a lot of problems with this, a lot of interference. Do you think you can sort something out for me? Sure, how about the NC9A? Yeah, good price? Good price. Good model? Good model. <laughs> right, listen, I haven't got a lot of time now. I've got to meet somebody in South Hall. When should we meet? Thursday, two o'clock? Yeah, that sounds good. So I'll see you on Thursday then, yeah? Okay, don't worry about the price. Right, do me a good model. I'll see you on Thursday. No problem, see you later. Several people had tried to ring Surrender, but couldn't get through. His family was now worried, especially since he'd failed to collect his daughter from her school. His car was seen at 7.30 and again at 9.30 in Southall. But where was Mr. Gill? 
Seven o'clock next morning back at Beaver's open space off Green Lane, Hounslow. John Wilford was exercising his horse, Kestrel. A man was slumped in the front passenger seat. Sarinda Gill had been attacked in the car by at least two men, and though he'd plainly struggled, he'd been stabbed to death. <laughs> <laughs> 